it'd be improved, I'm sorry, uh, increase up to five years. Uh, we talked about a two week period for the uh, work uh, to be done in setting up and taking down. And so those changes were made and are underlined in the draft you have before you tonight. And uh, I, I believe Mr. Palmasano has seen this and uh, believes that it uh, is uh, appropriate and uh, would be approved by the Coon Creek Board. So it's uh, back before you for final approval. Any questions on the resolution? Does this need to be approved by the Coon Creek Board before we approve or no? We uh, I believe. Okay. I'm authorized to sign the agreement. Yeah, par paragraph two, I I try to put that in so that I, in uh, all these types of uh, resolutions that the president and clerk will sign after they've received a duly signed original from the other party. That's the other question you got. I will entertain a motion to approve resolution 20-12. A resolution approving a license agreement for, for the use of certain public property by the Coos Creek County. question or comment on the motion? I now understand Charlie Brown's Mr. Reed. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yeah. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Bijeki. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carl, thanks a lot. All um, I see is Lori because Carl's behind her. I see Carl and I'm like, no, no, no. I just, I looked over, I'm like, that's not Lori's Lori. <laughs> and it is. Um, Mr. Mayor, we have a motion to approve an updated billing fee schedule. Um, and this is a sort of a fluid situation. I think, think you can probably imagine that. So once again, I want to apologize that you have a new piece schedule in front of you that's slightly different than the one that was in your packet. Not because it was incorrect when we sent it out on Tuesday, but because these fees are changing as we um, make this transition from b and F to a uh, safe bill. Uh, I just want to say this before I hand this off to Josh, because he and Laurie have done a great job of updating this. Uh, the fee structure had not really changed since 09 when b and came on board. And while we were going through the motions all the time, we really didn't have good internal uh, control over that. So in going through this with uh, being at, excuse me, with SAFE, but we want to get really off to a good start. So I'm going to give this to Josh in just a minute. I just want to make a comment that we're now about a week into this. We we had a transition meeting yesterday with BNF here, with the vice president, and also their director of quality control. And uh, we spent maybe 30 minutes talking about specific um, uh, permits that are pending and w which direction they're going to go. And I have to say that they were very cooperative and agreeable on how, we, how we're handling the transition. Essentially, the four big projects, that, or the five big ones that you just heard Brad talking about, uh, that we expect to finish in the next 30, 60 days, will stay with BNF. They're down pretty much to final occupancy. We're talking about Pet Ag, Truck Country, Love, um, Stanley East, and Dayton Freight. So those are all. I'll, we'll, we'll stay with uh, BNF. Uh, we have about uh, 12 or 13 pending uh, house new home permits that will be uh, the inspections will be done by Safe Built now because just the initial review was done by BNF and now the inspections will all be done by Safe Built. Um, so we worked through the transition and all the sheds and, and the sim pretty simple things. Uh, the pending ones will be completed by Safe, uh, excuse me, by BNF. Anything new as of last Friday had been going to. Um, safe bill. And at the next meeting, I will ask Josh to just give you a quick demonstration of the of the new um, dashboard that we all have. It's 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 uh, in the cloud, so we just click on a link, and we have a beautiful dashboard that shows us uh, pending reports. It shows us all, we can look at all the reports for one particular builder. It's just a really great tool, and, uh, and we can also upload documents to that here, and they can upload documents at their end, and a builder or applicant can upload documents themselves. So we, we do have the dashboard now, we're working on it, and uh, it's really working smoothly. Um, today, they, they finished the permitting for uh, Jimmy's sports bar, and there'll be a temporary occupancy permit issued probably tomorrow. So stop by Jimmy's and have a beer tomorrow. He's, he's open for business, we'll be. 
Uh, so I'm just really pleased with the staff work here. Lori and Josh are doing a great job transitioning. I'm great thankful that BNF has been cooperative and and um, Safeco is doing a great job. So with that, now I'm going to give it to Josh to talk about the fee structure. Yes, yeah, so the fee structure uh, is basically the same thing that the village has been doing uh, the last, you know, recently. Um, the reason that we have it in front of you today is because in the safe built contract, they take 80% of plan review fees and inspection fees as stated in our code, um, which in our code, it says that these fees will be, you know, updated um, periodically by ordinance or by posting, which is why it's called a fee posting because we want to write whole ordinance and everything. Uh, so really, um, the, the miscellaneous permits up top are the ones that you generally think about like fences, sheds, driveways. Um, those are the same. There's there's no changes. Um, everything in single family homes, which are like the new houses being built in Prairie Ridge. Uh, and then the commercial stuff would be like a PEG. Again, all those fees are just are just updated because the last time that something was officially passed by the board, we believe, was in 2009 in the BNF contract. And those numbers are old. So we really just needed to get this in front of the board and have you guys uh, uh, check it out and consider it for, for passing. Are there any questions about them? Questions about are, you, are you saying that none of the fees changed? The only thing that's changed is the zoning review fee on the single family homes, town homes, and duplexes. That's the only thing that's changed. The 135 zoning review fee. Um. Oh, that was going to be one question. Because the fees in this don't match what's in our packet. What's different? So, like, for example, our fee for approaches and driveways residential is $114 online. Right. And look at this. Okay. It's 97 plus 30 is $127. Um, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm no. with you. No. So, you're looking at the building permit packet, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, that would be a miscellaneous permit. Right. And that would be a plan review and two inspections. Right. So, is that right? Plan yes. So it would be uh yes. So it'd be thirty dollars uh -huh. plus, plus forty two. Right. Plus 42. 42. What's the difference? What's the difference between a second inspection and a reinspection? <clears throat> a reinspection is if you fail, you're charged a reinspection fee. So if your base is improper or the asphalt is improper, um, you would get a chance to you know remedy the situation okay. and then it's reinspected. Right. So you're charged. Four, 42 times 2 is, uh -huh. is 84, four, 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 yeah. and then the 30 is the how we get to the 100. Correct. Correct. So everything is 100, but decks are 156. Is there three inspections? Yeah, there? there's a post hole thing, a frame, and then a final. Gotcha. Okay, so that's making sense. Yeah. So, <laughs> All right. There is a correction that hundred and fifty dollars that's on the commercial side belongs on the new home side. Where? That's not a commercial driveway and sidewalk inspection. Oh, that's that's simply my error. Yeah, that belongs in the single family home section. That is a, a charge in that category. Any other questions or comments? Are these numbers all correct? Now? We would ask, I don't know if it has to be amended. I guess we would ask you to amend to move the one pair uh, to, the, to the single family. Yeah, the driveway sidewalk inspection. There. Yeah, the $150 fee that should be on the first page every single family homes and duplexes. So the fee right just in the wrong spot? Yes, it's just in the wrong spot. And just one final comment that there's there's no change in this this the fee structure was shared with safe Belt so that they can determine their costs and provide the quote to us and, and so it's it's based on these fees that does not mean the fees will never change uh, once they're on board they've already offered to help us um, consider our fees and compare to other communities and then they have updates 
but we didn't want to do that initially uh, because they based all of their staffing and everything based on our prior year work um, was split built you know are, are we having the new company review our permit packet for like do the inspections make sense because like i'm looking at sheds a shed built on a concrete slab requires a pre pour base inspection that's the only one listed for on a slab one final inspection is required for sheds not built on a concrete slab so if i put my shed on a concrete slab i can do whatever i want above that concrete slab because you're just coming to inspect the pre pour base you're not coming to inspect the final core you're not inspecting the shed i put up does that seem right i think that is not correct i, I don't have the packet in front of me but that i think there's what is the cost of the 72 dollars so an inspection yeah, that doesn't make sense. So I believe it's $72. And then if there's a concrete slab, you have to add another 42. For no, no, only after it says if electricity is to be installed, okay. this must be noted on the application or will, will require an additional permitting. Fee. So it may be worth them looking yeah, for a question. Your first question is yes, they will be reviewing okay. it for us and not just for content like you're pointing out, but also for fee structure. Well, so that that's what I'm looking at. Like if that's really a two inspection. <laughs> Uh, then it's then it's 114, not 72 dollars. Right. And, and I will tell you that's why there are a few changes from Tuesday till today because every day we're having conference calls with yep. them. I guess every yep. other day now um, was twice a week, not pretty much every day. Um, and and they're helping us understand some of the things that we've been doing that are not typical. So that's that's very helpful. You know, just like when you buy a new software system and people say you have to change your change the software to meet your system. A lot of times these experts know a lot more than we do. And we're taking advantage of that. So yes, they are. Okay. Those. Yeah, I think it would it would help just because some of the fee structures we list in the packet are also not in line with this. Like swimming pool says variable, solar panels is 325, but there's two inspections. So just having that extra set of eyes as you're going through could be really yeah. helpful. And honestly, this has not been looked at in nine, 11 years. Yep. Perfect opportunity for it. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right, now I want to take a motion to approve the updated building schedule. Uh, schedule. Uh, I would change moving driveway sidewalk inspections from the second page to the third page. Second. Any further questions or comments? Oh, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Reed. Yes. Mr. Kajeki. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have to. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have to. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't have the box. I have the box. Have the box. So, yep. Yeah, there are two items. Gloria has volunteered to stand in for our Um, first of all, you have uh, a request for payment to uh, Lieutenant Jones and Village Manager Hedges in the amount of $128.99. Any questions or comments on those uh, reimbursements? Then I will entertain a motion to approve uh, the first accounts payable in the amount of $128.99. So moved. Second. Any further questions or comments? Mr. Kajaki? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Motion passed for zero. And the bigger item of accounts payable, uh, total about $280,204.33. Any questions? Page uh, five, cloud truck outfit purchase. Is that for one truck or is that for all three? That's for one. So the, the chassis, um, Payment was to Truck Country, and this is just for the um, the the box, the plow, um, the calcium tanks, and all the equipment needed to outfit it, which is not just more than the than the chassis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, how much was the chassis? Um, it's it's in your book. Seventy seventy nine thousand. How are we already? Seventy nine five. <laughs> So 
And so we yeah. didn't yeah. we didn't finance these. So we had to write a check because the truck came in and both vendors wanted to be paid. So I'm yeah. still working on financing. We're not driving the truck yet because um doesn't have plates and uh I need to make a visit to the Secretary of State as well. <laughs> Who needs plates? Yeah, who needs plates? <laughs> uh, uh, the potential service drives are wrong without plates. Is it they the are right? not required to have plates, which I think is very odd. Right? Like that's why the public work page for you. Is it the red one? Champion paving for Tuscany bike path. Is that what ComEd paid us for? Yes. And okay. this is expensed in the street department currently, but that will be capitalized because it meets our threshold um, and it was a complete redo of that portion of the, of the path. So it's it's going to show, unfortunately, in our summary of items that are expended, but then it will be capitalized. Okay. Any further questions or comments? All right, so I'll entertain a motion to approve accounts payable number two in the amount of $280,204.33. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Yeah. All please. Mr. Kelly. All right. Mr. Jackson. All right. Mr. Reed. All right. Mr. Anderson. All right. Motion passed. Okay. All right, public relations. Uh, you got until the fifth to fill out your census, so you haven't done it yet. We have got some more time. It says at least the fifth. The so fifth I, of October. I thought it got extended to the end of October. Well, as of right now, last thing I read is at least the fifth. So, I mean, that's, yeah. I'm, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking you're going to move it up to the end of the Yeah, September 30th. Well, it was October. Well, it was October, October yeah. but then the Census Bureau said that doesn't give us time to. Tally all the data and do the reporting by what's constitutionally mandated. So then they moved it to September. And then there was a court that filed that because of Corona and stuff that they had to keep it going because census was winding down and letting people off. And then there was a court filing that you can't let people off. So now they've extended it to at least October 5th. So I don't know when it's going to end, but as it is right now, we're up at 74.4%, the self response rate for Illinois. 71%, so we're above the state average, but we're still falling behind like Pingree and what were we at 74 before? Or was it 72? Yeah, 72 for the longest. Are they sending around like door numbers? They have been. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we asked for a report, like, yeah, to be able to see. Last uh, 10 years ago, our self response uh, rate was 79.3. So this right now, I don't think our, that rates ever going to change on the computer because now they're going to there's something about the remuneration. Mm -hmm. So and that's eighty five percent complete according to the map on the. They don't give you an exact number; it's just like a color. Right. So if uh, we figure that they're eighty five percent done going door to door, and we've got a seventy four point four percent. Self response, which is either via the internet, which is broken down there, just below that. 68% uh, on the internet. Yeah, 68 was done on the internet. The rest were done either mailing it in or phoning it in. So now the rest, I don't, like I said, I don't think 74.4 is going to change because the self response is pretty much over. They're all relying on door to door. But if they've actually completed 85% of the remaining 20s, 5.6%. That's not too bad. So I don't know if we can ever get an actual percentage completed. So you're uh, saying that will take time for them to get that data in. It's basically like my taxes. They're not going to be they, right away. They supposedly now update this website every day. Right but you don't get an actual number on the door to door. Okay. Yeah. Percentage. Until it's all wrapped up. Okay. Right. Right. Gotcha. So October 5th. Awesome. October 5th. So keep telling your friends and neighbors to fill out the census. Keep doing it. You guys want you guys want to cover trick or treating under public relations or do you want to cover it under new business? I have a question on the census for you. So I think all of us are on Facebook. Did you guys see what was posted? Did it come up in your feeds? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. That's okay. I just want to make sure that the effort we put forward actually hits people's feeds. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. like, I know I see the police one every day. 
Yeah. 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 Plus, I've, I've shared some mics. Uh, How many times do we go? Aaron. Every day. Every day. For so the, the, the past okay. so last board meeting, I, that yeah. night I got home and I set up pre planning for two weeks, and there were either videos or they were regular post reminders. But I just wanted to make sure, like, what our exposure looks without mm -hmm. access to the analytics. So I wasn't. Do you sure. want them? And this is through the Village of Hampshire Facebook? The Village of Hampshire Facebook. Page. You want access to the whole deal? I'll give it to you. Nope. Can you... That's your job, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yeah. Just a thought, has anybody shared it to the Hampshire community page? Because I know more people probably look at that than... We've tried to share things on and off. Um, okay. I've seen them. Okay. I've seen Just them. a thought. Yeah. Uh, I was trying yeah. to pull the yeah. Okay. Yeah, I tried to change the kind. There's more juicy yeah, stuff on there, you know. Nobody wants to look at the village pits. Dirty water. Yeah, so I mean your your posts are averaging well the last one that they mentioned all the towns, it was seven hundred and six seventeen hundred people. And then uh there's one four hundred, and another one is seven hundred and twenty. Well, there's some five hundred and seventy one, six hundred and thirty-five. But the reason why I'm saying that is as we talk about announcements going down and the way we get information out, we should also take a look at the actual statistics on reach of whether or not sometimes we need to think about Jay doing paid campaigns on Facebook versus this is like this is worthy of a paid campaign or this is worthy of just a post and how we approach some of that social sure, strategy. That, that's something that we can talk to A5 about as part of our, part yeah. of our contract. Didn't we do a paid campaign through BBC a long time ago? Yeah. Was it a couple of years ago? I think we yeah. Okay. That was now. It was like two years ago. It was super cheap yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. Because you're gonna, you're gonna. Uh, if I recall right, it was a discussion because I didn't. You're I gonna zip code restrict it. Yeah. You guys okay. were mad because I never asked for the money. Ten dollars. I'm sorry, Doris. Ten dollars. All right, cover Halloween real quick so we can get here. Yes, sir. Halloween. Uh, <laughs> Illinois Department of Health made, uh, released some guidelines uh, day before yesterday. It's been pretty well posted. I know that the school district shared it out and uh, with their parents and that kind of thing. Um, I went to the Metro West meeting last week and uh, all the surrounding communities. There's not a single community that's outlawing per, per se uh, trick or treating. They're all offering just guidelines. And so there's uh, some towns that went for it and said, hey, I'm going to put this stuff out. And there were some towns like us that were kind of waiting because as of last Wednesday, uh, it was said that the governor was going to make an announcement in the last seven, next seven days, which he did. So he put them out two days ago. It's the standard stuff, maintain social distance, wear face coverings, trick or treat with your own household, that kind of stuff. Um, I was just going to basically, I sent to the PR committee and I can you know, read for, for you guys. Basically, it was just the Illinois Department of Health has released guidelines. These are the guidelines from the Illinois Department of Health. Turn your porch light on if you don't want, you know, if you want to participate, the village is recommending you turn your porch light on. Be mindful of the porch light, the porch light's off, don't approach the house. You know, and so I created a graphic I shared with all of you. Um, I was just going to, I left it the way it is as of now because I'm trying to, I was, you were going to have a conversation last time we talked about hours, right? Because the afternoon on Saturday. Typically it's about three to seven we do, four to seven. Four to seven. Four to seven. So I think we should stick with seven at the end. But you know, when, when Saturday, you know, bring it up to two. You guys are ice two. It's Saturday. I mean, Kajeki's got to buy more candy then. <laughs> Still using the stuff from last year. Oh, yeah. How many kids did we get over there in the rich side of town? Uh, Can you get that in the lives? Uh, Skip Kajeki's house. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're confusing my neighborhood with Chester. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll post it as two to seven. And then we'll get it out there some later on tonight. Yeah. Did you add in? Your I would add that in here just for those that feel not comfortable participating. Sure. Yeah. Well, rain, shine, or snow. Yeah. We're not the Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think the police chief wants to chase down Pooh Bear and Ola. You better in your house. Um, you should come up with some kind of cute thing like masks and courage or something, you know, like for the kids. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> they did courage. say. Uh, who was it? Though? Only cloth mask. Halloween mask on block, but the cloth. No, mask you have to have a mask under. Well, your... it says it says wear proper face covering. Yeah, she was. The doctor was talking about that yesterday. Yeah. Actually, uh, a regular Halloween mask is not going to cut it. It's not going to keep you safe. They said. Any further? I don't think so. Plenty of joy. No report. 
Public safety has the police department monthly report chief, and, and Toby's not here. Uh, I think you have everything in front of you. I can run down the numbers and get any questions as to what what. what. Have we figured out what's going on with this whole car thing, or is it just people being loud? I'm sorry? Have we figured out what's going on with this whole car thing, especially in the Tuscany area? Or... I, I think that we're not going to detail of active okay. investigations and stuff. But... A lot of it has dropped off. We have warrants for one person. We've identified another one. The groups that were coming in and plaguing a lot of the northern uh, towns up here have subsided. I think what we're dealing with now is a bunch of lone wolf, if you will. I mean, people in the neighborhood. And Happy this kids. is all in hand. Gotcha. Right. In other words, we're, we're not seeing the influx of people coming to, to Hampshire. That's due to your lock your door post. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Thank then, you. Then are pretty funny, by the way. So who's ever doing it? It's, no, it's, 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 it's great. It's, it's every like, night trying to dig for one. It's been great. Yeah. So the pictures get people's attention. Yeah, that's a moment. moment. You. It seems to be catching on. Any questions on the numbers? It's been busy. Thank you, sir. We did, uh, I'm sorry, could we just talk oh. about neighborhood watch just a little bit? I don't know if that should have come up under PR, but since we're on public safety, uh, I know there's been two discussions about whether we have a live a live event, organizing event, or an online one. Uh, Trustee Reed, do you feel strongly about that? I know Brian would like to have a I think we'd like to have an in-person one if we can. I'm, I'm good with it if you guys think we can pull it off. Okay. That's the thing is if you think we can pull it off, I mean, I know that the school district won't let us use the property. So, because it's closed. I mean, the park district's even going through that with and they have a governmental agreement for them to use the uh, Gary Wright's gym, mm -hmm. and they can't even use the gym. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to have a place. Well, tentatively, we do have a meeting scheduled for the uh, Prairie View subdivision. On the 6th. On I got to go to my door. Right. Today. That that's happening. We had one for the Highlands uh, a week or so ago, kind of doing it outside where you can maintain the social distancing. Great turnout for the one up at the Highlands. So we're trying to generate interest and see where we're going to go with it. If we do get the interest and we can sustain that, you know, we'll go ahead with signage and help them organize and be a part of it. So how do you you guys just want to? You want to piggyback off the one on Prairie View Parkway? Do you want to publish it? How do you want to do this? Well, I think what we're going to is go ahead and uh, and shoot for the six. Uh, Sergeant Edwardson is going to, you know, spearhead that one. And as soon as he gives me more information, I'll get it uh, available and reach out to you to, to push something out. And I'll push something out. And I, I know that there were some concerns from the um, public that. Um, I don't know, that if we put it out there that the people that are actually doing the crimes would be uh, attending, you know, which might not, you know, be so bad because then they're going to know that we're messing with, you know, we're up to something. Yeah, that we're organizing, sure. You know, so there's two ways to look at it. So that's, the, I, I don't understand why that would be a bad thing. No, I, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm saying that this is why, I mean, this is why there, if you guys are on social media, there's the Highlands group, there's the, the, uh, Tuscany group, there's a Lakewood group. There's not one for Hampshire Prairie, not that I'm aware of. No, there, there is. I mean, I don't know if it's organized, but I don't I have No, 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 I'm saying a Facebook group. And oh, so, no, no, no. So, no, so, no, so, no, no. so what I'm getting at is if you notice that the, the neighborhood watch meetings haven't been posted in the Hampshire group, the main group, because there's a theory that there's a lot of these criminals, I don't know, whatever you yeah. call them. That are, that are in the other group. Yeah, I don't think the strategy is anything that's, you know, right. New and when it, and like I said, it's it's involvement from the community. Right. So I'm I'm good with whatever. We'll push okay. and we'll do. I mean, I'm totally cool with just saying, okay, why don't we just have a big one on the six? We've already got the space. If you want to if you want to record it, we can record it and post it, or we could just what we could do is at the end of it, I mean Edwards has got his talking points. Mm -hmm. I think at some point we just established a page on the website that says these are the established groups. Here's what you want to do. Here's what we you should do if you want to get involved. And here's a contact which would be right. So, but, but I think that we need to publish the information for these people that are saying, how come we don't have? How come we don't have? And then we can direct them to the website and say, yes, we have an established program. Here are the zones. Here's how you get involved if you want. 
And that's where we're going with this. You know, contact Sergeant Edwardson with his email, which is hard to figure out, and put it we out. We could there. even create a neighborhood watch. Sure. Email if you want, sure. That's going to multiple people. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, we right. could handle it any way you want. But now right. this is actually, Toby was, was accurate in the fact that this has been kicked off a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But it never goes anywhere. This exactly. one seems to stick. Well, because the, the, the issues died out as it's doing now, the car burglaries or whatever have you is kind of calming down now and suddenly everybody's temperature drops. Right. But there's also other, you know, things we can look at as a community too, uh, to kind of make sure it stays away too. Okay. So are there specific boundaries then for a prairie parkway? Okay. Did they go watch? Or did it go from Twitter and everything started with Chris? <laughs> Probably all of Prairie View Parkway. And that would include probably the other side so of uh north, north and south of correct. It's all it all has to do with with block captains and people that want to take those sections and organize and maintain the phone tree uh, notifications. So I mean, obviously the neighborhoods are easy to, to define, touch sure. the woods and like well, Islands. Prairie Parkway. What are we gonna do about the older parts of town? Well, so, I think what Chief has been saying is that somebody has to step up to want to run. And nobody over there has. Right. No, there has been absolutely no interest in the old sections of town. And once that's, you know, once they come forward, then we can go ahead and, you know, help organize them. And Toby always says that the community's got to get involved. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, as oh, police departments do not run these things. It is yeah. the citizens. We will help set it up and we will act as liaisons and attend their meetings completely in the background. This may be a sensitive question to ask, but have we had the issues in the older parts of town? I haven't seen anybody post for them around those areas. Yeah, not as much because of the proximity of cars that are. That's what I'm thinking. They have to like get in past all these other communities to get to the older right. part of town. Right. And then they're saying on the outskirts, it's easy out onto the main yeah. highway, you know. So, yeah. Okay. They, they haven't been affected as much. Well, I think to your point with the community running it, the older part of town also tends to have. The older community in there, at least where I used to live off of Grove, it was mm -hmm. mainly older retired people that lived on both streets, Jackson and Grove. And I don't see them starting up a neighborhood. I don't see them locking their doors. So, <laughs> I, should have been yeah, I understand the old guard Hampshire people, they don't lock up, and it's when well, you're going to be in a victim, and I hate to see that. Right. Mm -hmm. Education is the first thing. Yeah. Anything else we need to cover on that for now? <clears throat> Feel the trail. Number four. Field services. So I went to meet with Vaughn last week. He had to cancel. Uh, I brought up to him for our discussion. I said, there are lots of questions since China is not taking the recycling. What's happening with this? You're talking about raising rates. We were being audited. Like, where does our recycling go? What does it get used to? Do you, can you say recycling actually gets recycled? Because the NPR report says that most of it's just getting buried in the landfill. Uh, so we're supposed to meet about that. Now it's going to be a, a Zoom meeting tomorrow, potentially. But I'll let you know. So if you want to join. Uh, the funny thing is, though, like every other day now, I'm getting some type of email from him about the updates on recycling, and now his email signature says, please do recycle printed emails. So it's kind of funny that all that's not coming forward, but we'll see what happens. The issue is we pay extra for recycling. If they're not actually recycling and burying things, one, I'm not going to follow an audit where they want to charge us more money, and two, we need to understand where that extra funds are going towards. So that's all I have to say on the public or growth service. Uh, uh, Public Works also has a report uh, for the street department. So it would be pretty straightforward. They didn't use any asphalt. Never. 167 locates and two street department emergency calls, which I think were two main breaks. And it's still, we would say that's not all they did. <laughs> Any question on that? Call Dave Sharon. <laughs> uh, BBC. Um, we've got our meeting uh, coming up um, on um, the 14th, 14th uh, 630. It'll be held here at uh, Village Hall, so everybody's welcome to come. We'll be getting a presentation, I believe, from page five. We'll be presenting, um, you know, what the uh, 
they took away from, I guess, the series of questions. And they're going to talk a little bit about mission statements this time, too. Okay. So we're getting ready to do that. Karen Chesky got her email set up. Thanks to uh, Mike Green, to appreciate it. She also got through uh, OMA. Um, but other than that, we haven't met since the last time I gave you guys a report. So we'll be meeting uh, in a couple of weeks. That bank was awesome, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's awesome. done a great job with that. She's a pretty cool. Do you have cool person. any more people? No, we don't have a ton of money either, to be honest with you. I think we're down to 19 or 18,000, something a little bit. But at this point, we've had some interest from the cave, has expressed some interest, but that's going to be a major project. Um, we know that Blocks is planning on applying next year, right at the jump. And then there's another company that had mentioned um, that they're interested. But at this point, that's about it. Can they apply? Like, can they apply in April or March for the next fiscal year, or do they have to wait for the fiscal year to start before they can? Well, the way that we've been handling it is the approval has to happen inside the next fiscal year. I don't know if there's actual. This is probably the first year where you're going to run out of money this early. Yeah. So once we get through our budget discussions, which are going to be at the next board meeting, we'll have a forecast for you, a full year forecast. Uh, then we'll have a better idea of what where we what we can do. Yeah, and to be quite frank, we're not pushing it that hard right now, just because we're of the uncertainty inside the budget. I mean, we put quite a bit early. Um, there is a little bit left over, I believe, but again, just that's a kind of cognizance, being cognizant of the situation to build, and it's not something we're being able to I would like to think if we have a really good project come along, we find funds for it. Um, you know, we did cut the budget from 100,000 previous years to 75 this year, just because of the challenges. But we'll have a much better idea in uh, two weeks. We should we should hear back from our CARES Act funding application in the next week. I would like to think by next week. Yeah, the county. Yes, yeah. uh, I won't go into all this, but if anybody wants to know, it's been a real a mess. The county's made a complete mess of this thing mm -hmm. uh, to the point where we were not allowed to have any conversations with them. Uh, I'm going to stop short sure of saying that because they went outside and spoke to somebody else who had to convey uh, a message to me. Uh, because they wouldn't speak to me directly, which is really kind of cheesy. Yes, mm -hmm. um, but we we do have to, our allocation is three hundred seventy-two thousand dollars. We submitted an application that consumes all of that, and there could conceivably be a second round of funding later in the year. But we think the county is probably just going to keep all that for themselves. Um, so I think the I think that number is going to really help us a lot. So we'll know a uh, much better handle on that by the next meeting. And, and out of curiosity, have we heard anything on the CDBG funding down on the streetscape? Or? No, um, only that we had a slight problem with the application. Some numbers were transposed, so we had to update that and send it in again. But I don't expect that to happen until the very end of the year. Okay. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is everything in, in Springfield, especially DCEO, is really backlogged right now. No, I know. That's part of why I bring it up is to. Uh, or do we have any plan of follow up or? Oh yeah, Freddie's okay. checking in frequently okay. with them. We have a, we have two other applications pending down there for the water tower, the, mm -hmm. the member initiative, and then the old member initiative for two hundred twenty five thousand from a couple of years ago. Um, and we're following all that very carefully. I spoke to three deputy directors at DCEO last week. Okay. Uh, compliance director, the member initiatives director, and Wendy Bell, the regular grants yeah. initiative yeah. Uh, deputy, and they're all just really swamped. I will say that agency probably performs under pressure better than anybody else. IDOT, and I would say IDOT and DCEO are really the only two state agencies that are functioning in a timely way. And they're really struggling because they don't have good remote access. Um, there's still a lot of them are working from home. So it's it's real challenges. For sure. I just worry about that looming deadline. Yeah, we're, we're watching very carefully. All right. Anything further, sir? Uh, no, go Cubs. <laughs> new business early announcement before we adjourn to executive session under section 2C11. I have one announcement. Uh, during the week, last week Friday, I asked Mr. Hedges if I could deputize um, cash. So he is now my deputy clerk. So in case of I'm absent, especially during the election time, mm -hmm. he can fulfill me. But here he will be, and he's doing a great job. She didn't ask me to be her deputy. She asked you. She didn't ask me. What about me? <laughs> Anything else? Yes. No. Right. You want to change his nameplate to deputy? I already got my promotion and salary increased on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> Deputy clerk would probably be better than assistant. Deputy clerk. Well, congratulations. Thank you. No pay raise. Did they tell you that? <laughs> He's learning. He's learning. <laughs> All right, then I want to get a motion to adjourn to executive session under uh, probable pending or imminent litigation section 2C11. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? No call. Please. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Kajaki. Aye. Mr. Reed. Aye. Mr. Emma. Aye. Motion passed for zero. All right. Four.
Okay, please proceed. All right. Anything for open session? And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Jackie, Mr. Reed, Mr. Adams, motion passed for zero.